The last video we took a look at the theory behind the pop attract to surface and I want to cover kind of more in depth of how we actually can do this in a more practical situation. So let's go ahead and drop down a geometry node and let's drop down a sphere. We're just going to create some geometry to spawn some particles on. So we'll crank this frequency up and the scale up and then we'll just drop down a mountain node just to give us some breakup of the actual surface here. And then I'm gonna drop down a pig head just to give us something to work with as our as our attraction surface. So we'll wire the sphere as the first input, the pig head as the second input. And then in here, let's go ahead and turn off our guides. Let's turn off the constant activation and set the impulse activation to $FF equals equals one. And that just makes it only spawn particles on the first frame. And we'll create like, I don't know, 3000 particles. So now we can drop down our pop attract. And we'll set this to surface points. And then in our geometry source, Let's set to that to second context geometry, which was our pig head. And by default, this is going to attract them to the first uh, or primitive zero, as we discussed in the last video. So let's let's uh, just change that just simply. There's actually a couple of ways to do this. Let's actually set up a pop collision detect as well, so that the particles will stop when they hit that. So. We'll do second context geometry there. We'll turn off the colored heads because we don't really need that. And then we'll just hit stop. So now if I press play, they're going to be attracted towards our surface. And they're all actually being attracted towards this, this point right here. But uh, they hit the geometry, so that's why they stop. So we get somewhat of an effect, I guess. But uh, not exactly what we're looking for. So if we take our pop attract here, we can click this use vex expressions and we can click this pass through and then we can randomize this. So we kind of took a look at that before. So let's, we need an integer. So we'll use a floor and this is going to round that down and then we'll do a random, actually, sorry, not a random, but a fit a one and then a random. And we'll base this off of the point number or PT num. And we'll set this from, we'll actually, let's look at our geometry here. We're just gonna, we're going to just hard code this for this example. So we have two, eight, eight, eight primitives. So we'll set this fit O one to be from zero to one. That's the, the fit O one one part. And then we'll set that from zero to two, eight, eight, eight. And then we should be somewhat set up here. And actually, here, let's pop this out. Show you what that looks like a little bit bigger. If you hit control and the plus sign, you can make this bigger. So this is what we have for our, our VEX code. So let's refresh this. And now the particles are being brought towards the surface here. So this breaks up the the shape a little bit um, so you got to be careful with what you're doing with these effects depending on what you have uh, typed in you may end up with some some clumping which you may not want and, oh by the way i forgot to mention at the start but this project file is available on patreon so if you want to grab that you can grab it on patreon but uh, i got a bunch of different setups on how to do different things in here but let's uh let's continue on here so we are just setting these equal to, to random primitives. So they're going to just hit the, the random primitive or whatever primitive they hit first. They're gonna be attracted towards a primitive and then they will they will stop once they hit the geometry. So maybe we don't want to do that. We wanna track them kind of towards the closest point on the surface. And we can do that relatively easily. If we drop down a pop wrangle wire that in we need to set our inputs so our second input we want to have that as the second context geometry 
And I'm going to go ahead and just pop this out for us. So with this, we need to, we're going to use the XYZ distance function for a couple things. So we are going to need a couple of things in order for this to work. So we'll do I at um, my goal prim. So we need an integer, my goal prim. We're also going to need a float. So we'll do F at goal distance. And that'll be how far are we away from the um, the goal prim we are. And then we need a vector. We'll call this my goal prim UV. And that'll be our UV space of our goal prim. So then we can just set up an integer. So we'll call this goal prim is equal to, and then we'll do our floor again just to make sure it's an integer. And we'll do our x, y, z distance function. And with this, we need to select our geometry. So we want to use the pig head. So we'll use input one because um, the first input, which is our sphere, is going to be zero. The second input is our pig head, and that is one. And then we'll do at p. And actually, I didn't even set it up. It's it's based upon the inputs of the wrangle here. So I didn't even set up the, the sphere as the first input. So uh, with that pig head as our second input, we will use that as as one. You could, if you set this input as the second context geometry, the first input, then you could put zero, and that would that would work. But we'll just leave it as is, just so it matches the the setup of the actual popnet inputs. And then we need to do our at my goal prim, and then we need to plug in our goal prim uv so at my goal prim uv and that's the end of that uh, just zoom back out there so we're also going to need to set our goal distance here so we'll do f at goal dist is equal to and then we can just copy this distance function so x y z distance copy that over and we're all good to go there and then if you would like to set up your goal prim uv you can just do a vector and we'll call this goal prim uv is equal to we'll need to access the prim uv function for this and then we'll use the where we want to access the prim uvs of our of our pig head so that's going to be one and then our p and then at my goal prim, and then at my goal prim UV. And by default, okay, so I'll actually, so let's go ahead and click apply and accept here. And then we can actually come into this pop attract. And if we set this back to this path, pass through, let's take a look at what we get here. So this is where we start to get some of that clumping. And the reason for this um, is, well, actually, you're seeing, you're kind of seeing the same thing. It's, it's kind of overriding these values because this, this pop attract is the last thing that's being calculated in, in the day in the like simulation. I guess is the way that I th that I think about it. Um, so this is the the last thing that's calculating, and it's seeing that our primitive is zero, so it's going to attract it towards, kind of towards that, and that's not exactly what we want. So we can take our goal prim and we can rename that to. We want to make sure it's specified as an integer, so we're going to put i, and then we're going to do at my goal prim. And then we'll do the same thing for the goal prim UV, except for this one's a vector. So V at my goal prim UV. And that's just going to set up essentially the points to move towards the closest point on the surface. And you can see that kind of here. These are the kind of the extremities of our, of our surface. So it makes sense that they're going to kind of be attracted towards those points. 
Now this obviously doesn't look very good, so we can really easily just break this up by adding in a pop wind. And we can up the amplitude here and change around the swirl size if we want. And if we press play, they're kind of moving all over the place. So we have to take this pop attract and come to the force. Let's just crank that up to like five or something. And then we should get this pulled back towards our object. And they kind of fly around before they hit the object. And this gives us a, a lot better of a of a breakup here with still some uh, some of that randomness from the, the pop wind. Now, depending on what you're doing, you can do this all inside of Wrangle instead of using this uh, collision detect. So I've got a setup in this actual project file that shows you how to do that. And it uses this goal distance function. That's why I should showed how to, to do that. You can uh, basically take this goal distance and you can use that to determine kind of when to stop your particles and also when to, you can use that to, to slow your particles down as they as they reach the surface of, of the object. So uh, that's something that, that sounds interesting to you that is available on the project file. It's also a good learning opportunity. You can try and figure that out for yourself, do some interesting things with Vex. But this is overall the, the simplest uh, version of this effect uh, that kind of looks the best with, with the breakup. It gets rid of that um, that clumping that we see in certain situations. So uh, this is the, the method that I kind of prefer the best or the most. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out. If you're interested in learning kind of more about this, I have uh, I was actually able to stream a couple times. So I got a couple of long streams that we kind of focused on this type of this effect in kind of building on top of it. Um, and I covered a bunch of different things in there. So if you're interested, you can take a look at that, at that live stream or those, those two live streams and um, go through and kind of learn some things. But anyways, if you would like to learn more about Houdini, I have a bunch of other videos on Houdini on my channel. So if you are interested in, in learning more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. They cover a bunch of different topics and to cover some render engine stuff as well. So check those out if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.